Welcome to the first episode of Behind the Bar. Today we're at Europa Weightlifting Club in Crayford and we're going to be interviewing Jack Oliver. Jack is a multiple British record holder. He is hoping to become a two-time Olympian, having represented Great Britain at the 2012 Olympics in London. Enjoy. So apart from Dave Snowden, <coughs> what sponsor have you got? I saw you got some new toys delivered. Yeah, I got my clock off set the other day. Um, so I'm working a little bit of a game faster. Um, so I've obviously got, because I was, I trained at the CrossFit gym, um, got weights. I mean, I weighed some of them the other day, and like, um, oh, like some, some of these 20s were like between 19 kilos, some of them, some were 21 and a half. So it's like, it's not ideal really. Um, so now I've got full clock offset, um, which is great just to have weights which actually where they're supposed to weigh. Um, Did you just ring up and say, any danger? Yeah, uh, I don't, I'm trying to think how it came about. I mean, obviously, because they work, they work in CrossFit primarily, um, I'm in a CrossFit gym, so I met, met Dale, uh, who's in charge of it, uh, through CrossFit basically, and then he spoke to me about you know, then moving into weightlifting, um, and I tried out a clock off bar before that actually. Um, it's a good bar, so you know, I gave a bit of feedback on that and so on. Um, but I thought of it, and it kind of went on from there. Um, and then, <coughs> yeah, so again, faster basically moving into weightlifting, and so I thought, what better person in the country to yeah. have a go on the kit and have a play around a bit and see what I can do. It's cool. Is it, is it just yours or is it like the gyms? No, it's, it's my kit. You know, it's it literally straight to me. Um, so yeah, it's, nice, it's, like, it's great to be on real weights again, basically. Instead of great big fat bumpers, yeah. you know, like where in the gym I can only get like a, on the big bump, it's like 190 on a bar, and like I don't generally squat anything below like 200 on back squat. So I go around the corner and get these dodgy old like powerlifting weights that don't fit properly and are like falling apart. So it was wicked just to be able to actually put the right weights on the bar and think like, yeah, I'm actually squatting the weight I'm supposed to be squatting, not like give or take 10 kilos each side. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Um, moving away from sort of weightlifting uh, issues at the moment, uh, who's been the greatest influence on your lifting career and why? I've got a feeling who you're going to say, because you wrote a good blog on it recently, but um, go on. Yeah, like, all of the Europa coaches really, like, <coughs> I mean, Europa's, it's not like any other gym. Yeah. Like, it never has been. It's, Europa's a mad place. You should see it in the evening and like, you know, like Terry, who passed away a few weeks ago. I mean, he's a, he's a complete madman. He used to wander around singing Deutschland, Deutschland, Uber Alice and swearing at people all the time. And like, um, but it was like him and Andy, between them, basically, did a lot of coaching. We had a few other big rates, John the Squat, if everyone's got a name, you know, that. Yeah. Um, and so, like, all of these big characters, basically, uh, what kind of uh, the ones who taught us how to lift and how to train, you know, like, from the weightlifting, just sort of weightlifting side, we had Andy there, um, who was obviously a massive influence on how, like, I train now as well, and how I did train. And then outside of that, we've got a lot of the assistants work that and Terry did a lot of that with us. And like I was saying earlier about like this general strength and you know some shoulder work, upper back work, and a lot of stuff that's like really neglected these days. You know that all came under Terry. So between them, we had everything sorted. And I've not really changed how I train that much now. I'm still doing all the same exercises and stuff that I used to do. Uh, do you do you not, do you prefer the, the old school approach to weightlifting? The sort seventies and eighties, the good times. Yeah, you know. Person, personally, I think it's cool. My coach is like 70 years old. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> like, there's nothing really new in weightlifting. You know what I mean? If anything, like, things have just been forgotten and that's been worse for it. So, like, there's loads of new people coming into weightlifting, which is great, but most of the coaches are really young and, like, so they've not, le they've not learned to lift from the last generation. And so a lot of things have just been missed out. So, like, by learning from the older guys going back to like Andy's generation and Terry before him, you know, you learn a lot more that way and you learn about proper training program, not just whatever people have seen on the internet, which is how people are kind of... You have to experts. Yeah, it's like it's in the net guru, it's everywhere on there. Everywhere. Whereas, you know, if you, if you want to coach weightlifting, like, 
first step one is learn how to lift weights. There are loads of like strength conditioning coaches out there, and like some are great because they've actually learned weightlifting, and some of them are just coaching and they have no idea what they're doing, and they're just clueless. And I hear things that they've said, and I'm just like, I learned that was wrong on the first day in the gym. Um, these people are teaching it because yeah. um, all they've done is like never actually trained. You know, for those people, get down to a weightlifting gym, get down to Europa, and you know, see all the boys are doing. And, so yeah, I'll actually train properly before you go on and try and coach. No, it's, it's good advice. It's good advice. I think I heard a lot of egos, but it's true. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not here to keep people happy, am I? No, no I'm, I'm, I agree with you, mate. Um, so you wrote uh, a couple of things, like, uh, we've seen pretty like, well aligned in terms of our opinions and weight of them. You wrote um, a really good article about people trying to copy the Chinese. And it's yeah. something I have to, like, somebody that works in the industry, I have to fight all the time people go on the internet and they're coming back and questioning you. You think, why, why are you paying me if you already know the answer? Oh. Um, for anyone who's not read the article about your Chinese, can you just sum it up as reasonably briefly? Yeah. If you're not Chinese, don't train train like the Chinese. Um, they've got a different training history. They look started, you know, you, most people were starting their 20s here through CrossFit. These Chinese kids are starting at eight years old. They've got different ling lengths. They've built, you know, they've built completely different to you. They've got better mobility. You know, everything they've done has started at eight years old and be completely different. So why would you expect to be able to train like that when you started ten years later with you know a completely different body type? And you know, why try and copy someone who's like five foot two if you're six foot two? It's yeah. not gonna work. Can you sum up the leg strength thing as well you said with the Chinese? Yeah, like that's one thing that I don't think people ever realise is that at the end of the day, like actually there was a all things gym interview the other day where Kasharina and her coach I think it was and she said the Chinese technique is really lacking and like people watch the Chinese and they're like man that's amazing and I'm the only one sitting there going I'm not sure about that that looks a bit rough to me like you watch them they're always stopping in the bottom of the clean and the stand up with just your leg strength but like you wouldn't get that from the Russians so if they get stopped they ain't getting up a bit like because they're efficient that's how they get away you know that's how they lift heavy weights but the Chinese are just brute strength like if you watch you know, there are a few things you can learn from these videos online and like you watch the Iron Man ones and you've got like Vanev doing a grinding out code into a ball front point 245 at 77 and he's clean jerking 210. You've got Lu Xiaojun who's clean jerking 205 but he can front score like 280. And just, just stand up with it. Like at the end of the day, they're just strong. People think that they're, they're this big secret and that they're, everything the Chinese doing is a magical training system. Well, not really, they're just squatting 30, 40 kilos more. Like, of course, you can, you know, gotta find it easy. You get away with bad technique if you've got super strong legs. There's other factors involved as well. Oh, yeah. Lots of other little secret sources and yeah. stuff like that. Um, so, your person knows quite a big squat, and then um, when we filmed at the, the, the training camp, yeah. you were hanging in with the big boys, yeah. hanging in with Owen <laughs> and Sonny. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think people were quite surprised by that, because um, obviously you were what? Like, a good 15 kilos yeah. giving away to them. We haven't stuck in the scales though, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, um, you made 230, that's times really like a toy. So what, what advice would you give um, a new lifter in regards to pushing their strength? And by a new lifter, I mean someone who's snatching clean jerk, but maybe they're looking to push on to London champs and stuff. Yeah. Reps, simple as that. Like, um, <coughs> I mean, I've squat recently, twice a week, like I got I'm trying to think of the biggest number is like I did a 220 for five back squat not long ago. So you know, some decent numbers. And like I do just reps on it, like I do um, at least once a week, I'll do five fives or six sixes. And I only squat two or three times a week, but one of those sessions is gonna be like a brutal one. Like I've done um, six sixes on two hundred back squat, or I've done five fives on two hundred, but three no more at two pause reps. Um, and that was horrible. Like, I thought I was going to be sick and I was like dying having a heart attack after it. But like, if you're not feeling like that on a squat session, then you can't accept like, to get stronger. Like I've seen a lot of people, a lot of really bad uh, American programs, you get a lot of bad things from America. Um, That's just life in general, you know. <laughs> but like, and you watch it and there's people doing squat programs. So a guy I'm coaching at the minute, right? Um, he showed me what he'd been doing and it was like two sets of eight, or well, two sets of 10 or 12 and then eights and then a couple of sixes and you only end up doing like sixes on about like I don't know 70 percent so when I did my six sixes on 200 it was 86 percent so like that's if, that's if that's you're squatting below 80 percent then you're wasting your time you're just doing fitness right and so he went 
think he was the best bat squat. I did an eight week cycle with him. And he was lifting as one of his strength work. He went from 155 bat squat doing what he was doing to 170 bat squat in eight weeks. Like, that's the difference between doing these silly like 10 and 12, which will get you nowhere, to doing hard squat sessions. Fives and sixes, always like, you all get six sets done, really like five, five, six, sixes, six threes, and so on. And you'll be working 80 percent, 90 percent, and you see people doing like threes on 70 percent. And I'm like, you might as well, you might as well just go home and have a lie down. You'll get more strength gains out of having a nap than you will score in a three on 70 percent. So you know, I'm trying to do three on 90 percent, and that's why I get stronger. I'm willing to do our work basically. So I'm guessing you're not a big fan of uh, like one RMs and all that sort of jazz, unless it's for confidence. Not really, like. It's good fun, isn't it? Mm. So uh, I'm not, I'm not it's against it. Yeah. But yeah, it's good fun. You put it on Instagram, um, but like, it's not Instagram. It didn't happen, right? It's yeah, several. yeah, exactly. If not on social media, you didn't even train. Yeah, exactly. But like, um, yeah, that's cool. But like, do it at the end once you've done your reps. So like, it's cool. Yes, yeah, you know, if I did like, um, if I do doubles, I might do six doubles on two twenty, and then if I get through that, then I'm like, cool. I'll stick 230 on, stick 240 on, do your reps first and then have you play around. So, you know, like doing heavy squats is good. It's good to practice a bit of a grind sometimes and doing that work, but the majority of it should be those, you know, hard, repeat sets. The ones that are really hard work and no one wants to do, they're the ones that make you strong. The 10 minutes between sets like that. Yeah, that's it. When I did six sixes, it must have been about seven minutes between my sets and it was like, Every time my heartbeat would start to go back to normal, I'd go grab my belt, start thinking about the next set, and then back up it would go again. So it was just like constant. It must have been, it took me about 45 minutes to do my six sets. And it was like I was having a heart attack throughout the whole thing. It was just absolutely awful, but you know, it got me a 240 spot. Yeah, so that's true. Uh, I don't know so many videos of your front squat. Do you just prefer back or is it an injury thing? Yeah, because of my back. I do front squat, but it's like just. Practicing it, holding it on my chest, like off front squat, 150, 160, maybe 170 a push. Like, I mean, I can do it fine, um, but I won't do a front squat that's hard because it's worse on my back. So I might do some doubles on 170, pretty comfortable, and just leave it there. Which back squat, a lot safer on my back, so I push it a lot more. I think um, that's fairly common in like other countries as well. Yeah. Um, the, I think front squat, because of the way they can bend you forward, is just a lot more damaging on your back. So. If your back squat in, it's good enough. Um, I'm a big fan of front squats, like if you've not got an issue. Like, I mean, my best front squat is 210. Um, from when I was 85 kilos, and I've got my 180 clean and jerk. So it is good, but like, if you've got any issues with it and you don't need it, it's not worth the risk to do it heavy. Um, so yeah, risk reward, really. No, fair enough. Um, with, on the subject of strength, um, so you, you squat twice a week. Yeah. How often do you pull? Deadlift if you do deadlift and press, so yeah. any form of pressing movement. Yeah, like um, with pulling, so I don't really do any heavy ones anymore again because my back. And I think if you're squatting heavy, then you don't need heavy pull at the same time. So I'll do like sort of snatch high pull on sort of 130. So like I go for 90 percent ish of what I can actually lift, or it's generally what I finish on for the day. So if I snatch 130 levels. I grab my straps and do my pulls on 130. If I clean and jerk 160 doubles, I do my pulls on 160. So it's that sort of way, and I do that once or twice a week. And then I do my JDLs. You've seen my video of JDLs? I've seen JDLs, yeah. What is it in the snatch group? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but like you can't tell in the video, but it's a brilliant exercise. And I named it after myself, which makes it even better. But like, um, we'll put a video up. I got, I got people to try it. Like, it's, it's a very subtle difference. But it basically, snatch grip RDL, but Instead of when people push their hips back and load like hamstrings more to make it more backy, you push yourself really far over the bar, you let the bar hang out from you, so you got like a um, bigger kind of pivot on it, so it's harder to get back, and you push the weight forward onto your toes instead, so it's really hanging out front, dragging you forward. So it's like um, if you can get up to the sort of weight that you're lifting on the JDLs, then you're never going to worry about staying over the bar because you've had the bar hanging right out from you. So if you can do that with it, then you can keep yourself in the right position. So just practice of doing an even harder version of staying over the bar so that you're confident going with the heavy lifts. It's a good plug. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, you sold that, you sold me to be fair. Yeah. It is beautiful, but to be honest, I, I never program it with anyone because it is too hard to get it right unless I'm there to actually watch them, so it's pretty rare that I'll make people do it. Um, but yeah, it is it's taken hundreds of people across the country now. Yeah, I know, that's the problem. I broke my back, what you don't do? People doing it wrong because like, it's one of them ones that you have to do right for it to work and to not get injured. So, you know, if people want to come and learn how to do it, then cool, but then just, then just try it. Yeah. Um, so, you, you train at CrossFit West Yorkshire now. Yeah. Um, you work with CrossFit as obviously leading a business, obviously yeah. the majority of the money is coming from CrossFit. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, what is so for any crossfitters watching this? What's the number one technical error you see in both snatch and the clean jerk? I know there's might be more than one, but no. If you could nail one and you could to click your click your fingers and read it from the crossfit world, what would it be? I came up with like three before, and I can't remember what any of them were anymore. Um, like I coach there, so I try and make everyone do it right. Yeah. So uh, I've stopped seeing it as much, but uh, yeah, there are a couple of things you always see, like. Um, so you get where you well, kind of squat great weights, you get weak legs, so you get a lot of bum coming up early, so that because they deadlift big weights and can't squat anywhere near like in a decent ratio, you get people straightening their legs immediately. That's probably the most common one you see. So then their backs like parallel with the floor, and then they're trying to pull from there, which is never going to yeah. work. So that that's just soft, soft hip contact where the bar's like. Bent arm, early arm bend, dragging away from themselves. They're, they're the main two. And in the clean jerk, similar? Um, clean similar, and jerks is like. It's rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. A lot of them don't do split jerks, I mean. It's like, so there's one thing. They always do kind of push jerk, power jerks, they call them push jerks. Um, and I try and change it, I always tell them to call it power jerk. No, but so like, Split jerk something is just like a practice, so you see a lot of that, and um, it's, it's just positions with the jerks, like like I say, because they've never been taught like how to do it properly by a weightlifter, so they just kind of copy on what they see, so they don't realise like where your feet need to be and stuff, and like, I, I'm not going to name them, but I know I heard a coach, someone I was coaching was telling me that they were, um, they got coached how to jerk by someone who ran a weightlifting course and he taught them to put their toes forward and like their knees forward or something like that. And like I teach shops, I tell people to be a ballerina when you jerk, right? So your toes go out, your knees go out, you stay vertical, it's like doing a plie, so you've got to look really pretty. Mm -hmm. And then like, there are people teaching the opposite that which is just like wrong, full stop. And the other one, probably the one the worst thing I've heard is um, the same guy. And like I've heard it from a few people too. There are people out there teaching people not to stick with the same foot on your jerk, um, yeah, I've heard that. and to mix it, and just to go like left foot and then right foot on your next one. And like, this is just insane. Like, that's one of the worst things I've ever heard. Like, how can you expect to get good at it if you're changing foot every rep? It's just absolute madness. It's not functional, right? Yeah, but these aren't people that necessarily crossfit. You know, it's not got to be functional. It's got to be how to lift the heavy weight above your head. And we've got te people teaching crazy things like that. And like, no wonder people can't do jerks. I mean, we've got these coaches going around saying like, yeah, just, just swap your foot, do what you want with that, Bring your, make your knees touch together if you want. You know what I mean? It's like, this stuff's insane. You, um, spend, you spend your days telling people they don't have to have their feet pointing straight forward like that. Oh yeah, that, 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 that's actually one of the really common ones. That I should have said earlier, toes, all white people are starting toes forward, where it's everything I make half my time. It's just like, I get the stick out, you know, they got a PVC pipe, and I just push people's feet like that. Like I just, yeah, it's yeah. fine. New way of coaching. <laughs> um, so, as well as being a professional athlete yourself, um, you also coach your girlfriend Sarah, which yeah. people might not know. Uh, me personally, um, <laughs> she's sitting behind the camera, but there's absolutely no way that I could coach my yeah, girlfriend. It's, it's, it's absolutely a nightmare. It's, it's, so, that's good. Yeah. What's no, it? No, I think that's everyone. Like, I mean, Sarah is like Sarah is the hardest person I've ever coached by an absolute mile. Like, she is a job to coach. You know. But I, I do it because I want it to do well. Keep this in the video as well. I would, I don't, basically, I don't trust anyone else to coach her, so I've got to do it myself. <laughs> um, which is a shame because like, it's hard work. But she does work hard. Yeah. But like, she had a couple of other, I taught her to lift, and then she moved on, and like, Tamas coached her, and she was in the and then she came back to me. And, yeah, but like, within about three months of me teaching her how to lift, she would start like, telling me I was wrong about stuff. I'm like, I've been lifting for 10 years. 
Like, do you, do you really think you know more than me after three months? Like, I'm telling her, like, to do whatever sets. And she's like, no, I need to do more heavy lifts. I'm like, well, no, you don't. Like, I'm the coach here. Like, so you're going to do what I say or not? And she's just, like, kind of struck about it. But she's got a lot better. She's, she's finally starting to be able to. I was taking her three years yeah. to actually accept that I do have an idea of what I'm doing. Um, and, yeah, she's training well at me. She's training hard. And she's finally giving me less grief. She still gives me a lot of grief. Um, 